talked about the need for audiovisual gospel materials in indigenous languages, how the vision came about. Uh, we've heard from a number of exciting and encouraging examples like this can actually happen. Things can happen in this room that will make uh, the kingdom very different in the weeks, months, and years to come. Uh, we've talked about the importance of partnership. Now we're actually going to drill down into a little bit of the actual production process. What does it look like? Probably a good 30, 40 percent of you are very well acquainted with that. According to our knowledge, the rest of you are new to this. And so we're going to go now and talk about some media production, and we're going to hear from Carol, who's going to get us started. Go ahead and have a seat. Okay, so we've had some wonderful partnerships. I think we're all ready to go out and produce, right? How many of our producers go out in the field? Yay. Did that inspire you uh, to go for it? Okay, so, um, yeah, that's, we want to just, you know, really link you together. But I know a lot of times you go to these conferences, you just want to get out there and, and do it. But sometimes we just need to kind of take a step and just look at, our um, strategy, and also remember that we're cross-cultural media strategists. And so um, we want to go out and produce, but really realize the Holy Spirit's at work, and he's telling us, come join me in what I'm already doing. Sometimes we think, here we are to save the day, but it's the Holy Spirit at work that he comes out and tells us, what he wants us to do. So I just want to look a few principles of being a media strategist. I consider everyone in this room a media strategist. Our students all get this in our teaching and the importance of media strategy along with teaching on video production and things. But we really feel it's important because you as a media stra strategist, you challenge field workers to recognize Media is indispensable. You can't live without it. You need some form of media to help your um, content go further. But it can be incorporated into the overall strategy to reach a people group. And so we do see overall strategies. We have many plans. We work with strategy coordinators, and they need to come up with 100 plans to reach a people group. And many of those are media. And then we help to develop comprehensive media strategy to assist the evangelization of a people group. We want to see whole people group come to know the Lord, and so we need to come up with a plan for that. And then we coordinate media-related plans for evangelism, discipleship, and church planting. So we see the products that we're sharing helpful for evangelism, but also helping new believers, and then seeing multiplied movements of churches. And then the fourth one is we don't just talk vision, we produce. And so that's why we're going to need partnerships. We're going to need the people that really know about the people group to partner with the video producers and to come up with the best product there is for that people group. So what keeps us going? It's a passion. That's when the going gets rough, and we've brought some producers out in the field, even from Hollywood, and they go, I don't want to do this, man. I'm not in an aircon studio with a controlled environment. I can't tell my actor exactly what to do. I have to go through all these people. No way. So what keeps us going? We have a passion to communicate uh, to those people, and we have a passion that the lost might come to know the Lord. So it's by all possible means. It's when these guys go out in India next week, what's going to keep them going? The love of Christ is going to compel them and that these people would understand the good news. What keeps us going? People like Pastor Matthew saying, go on, come on, you can do it. Even when all our equipment got stolen and, <laughs> and then overnight, and he, he goes, hello, welcome. We go, hi, we just got our equipment stolen. Uh, but, but God provided and so that was a wonderful thing. But that's a passion to communicate. And we want to do it in the heart language, the language that's spoken in their home, among their family. There's a reason it's called heart language, because it, it's cherished. And you can see different times where we'd be doing a presentation, and um, we'd find the people even going closer and closer to the TV because they're drawn. They go, that's, that's our language. And sometimes we play it for them. 
And they're going, that, that's our language. We go, yeah, we know. But they just are so excited because maybe it's only been done in the trade language. But the heart language is really important, and it's close to them. And there's countless testimonies we have. We're at the video shop, and the guys, you know, the old days of slide or uh, VHS duplication. And our guys would go, they go, that's our language. And the whole group uh, gathers around. And we had a tape of the prime minister of Singapore, and he spoke in many languages. But when it came to the language that was his heart, he starts tearing up. So let's really try to do it in the heart language of the people. We craft the gospel story with the people. Crafting means you're doing it together. You're perfecting it, the best way to communicate with the people, their stories, behavior, and worldview. We want to see evangelists equip. So we don't want to just produce. How many of us as film producers don't want it to just sit on a shelf? We want it to get out there. So Calvin's always coming up with new gadgets. He came up with this dove stream you'll hear about in Little Tools. We're producers, but we also see the need to distribute and to help people distribute it better, that we got testimonies of like the Dove Stream being used by Syrian refugees. They come off the boat, and they're looking for a signal. They come up, see our film, and they're going, yes, that film is in our language, and they've come to know the Lord. So we want to equip evangelists to see disciple-making movements, not just a few individuals, but whole movements. So... Those are some of our passion and our goals. So what are some principles? And this is just a little bit simplistic, but if you think about it, sometimes we think, ah, oh, contextualization, what does that mean? It means to create understanding, so we want to be faithful to Scripture and relevant to culture. So that's a real, both things are needed in our communication of the gospel. So in your booklets, you're going to see a few of these charts. Here's a media strategy cycle. And so I'll just go through a few of these things. Uh, many times as producers, we want to go to 10. Let's just carry out the vision. All we need is our camera, and we're just going to shoot. But when you're a cross-cultural communicator uh, looking to do it for evangelism, you need to kind of stop and go through some of these things. So. The first important step is define your mission. What are you trying to do, and why are you doing it? Be precise enough to guide the development of strategy. And then second, who's my viewer? There's a big difference of ages, present knowledge of the gospel, misconception, and then how can I meet needs? So it's really important to describe the audience that we're trying to reach. And then we want to list the resources already there. Who are the people that can help us? What are the financial resources, the cooperating agencies? So we want to be a visionary. We found on the field that they say, wow, your project, your film project helped bring more agencies together and more resources than I have in like 10 years of working here because it was a partnership project. I found more resources that I never knew about because there was a project that we had to work on. So list the resources available, available, be optimistic, and believe God to provide for what you need. Then we look at analyze the possible methods and um, means of it. So this involves brainstorming, research, media, which will help meet our mission purpose with our potential resources. So we analyze it. They're a non-literate culture, so there's different aspects of that that we're going to have to use in our media. So we really look at our audience and think, what will be the best media tool to reach? Then we design our strategy. It's a sketch of what the actual strategy could look like and which media we will use. If we follow this strategy, what can we realistically expect as results, faith-filled and expectant. So that's number six. We're forecasting it. What do we hope to achieve? When you do a foundation 
grants, they often ask, what's your outcome? And so you have to kind of be faith-filled and also expectant of what are some of the things that you want to see accomplished. And then seven, teamwork, clear communication, and expectations. Then we develop detailed plans. A blueprint is developed so those involved in the mission can follow the plan. Schedules, timetables, develop leadership, and tenacity is important. Number nine, we gather and develop the resources, the funds, the equipment, uh, extensive checklists. When you go out in a project, if you might have 10 bags of equipment, but if you forgot that little connector, oh, I can't do the project. So develop extensive um, schedules and checklists, and then you carry out the mission after all those nine steps. You put faith and plans together, obstacles are overcome, and we go for it, and then we evaluate how did we do. Did we see the results that corresponded to our mission purpose? And that these lessons will help us be more effective in the future. So evaluation is really important. It might be painful, but we have to see what did we do right and wrong, and that's good stewardship and distribution. So that's all 11 points. And then also you'll see in your booklet this wonderful little diagram that we wanted to coincide with the 2020 vision. And I'll just, each of the phases has different diagrams that go with it. So the first phase is um, working with the partner. And, and so it's face-to-face -face or cyberspace is what we say. You can work with them or you can personally or you can cyberspace uh, in the internet with him. And then the project partner is really important, and we call him a project partner, not a client, because we don't see it as business. We see us partnering in this, what we're bringing to it, like we don't, we raise our own money to go to these projects, and then they're also sacrificing, so we're in this together. So it's a real partnership in these productions. We really pray and have the right timing for all of this, and then the second one is we, um, yeah, the phase two are some of the aspects of it, is we determine the budget, and we have the pre-production research, travel, communications, we look at office overhead, equipment needs, actor voices, location, rentals. Then we also look at the fundraising, other mission agencies, on-field missionaries, nationals, and pastors that can help us uh, with this. So we look at, you know, we're going to produce this project, then how are we going to uh, fund it? And so we need to really be visionary and desirous of working together with others. And then the third one, uh, you'll see that there's on page 12, there's some more cultural research how have people come to know the Lord? Testimonies, we're really planning for the project. Um, we want to determine the time on the field and forewarn the actors. Um, our, all of our staff can say how sometimes we do endless emails and we're really trying to, to um, plan ahead and be great. And sometimes the emails are good and sometimes not so good. Our team comes and they go, Oh, now you're here. Now we can plan the project. We're like, oh, yeah, okay. We tried to do as much as we could, but they're face-to-face -face culture. So we do as much of the script as we can, and some are great, and some just they just want to talk to you face-to-face. -face. Email won't work. So we usually plan at least a week to just hash over the script ideas we have. And... Um, they usually say, okay, now we can get started. You're here in person. I don't like email. I like to plan with you right here. So we find it's really important when we do scripting that we're waiting on God. We're sharing impressions of what the script should be. Um, there's like countless testimonies we can give to you about how 
we've gone to a people group and we don't have any idea of the script. Maybe we haven't gotten a lot from the people. And we just pray and we go, we got this impression in the story. And they'll go, yeah, that's a really good story. In fact, that's like a testimony of somebody who just came to know the Lord. And we're going, yes, that's a good uh, story. So then we take elements of that, put it together, and the people go, how did you know so much about our culture? How did you know something that would so meet our, our needs? And we said the Holy Spirit really gave us the heart. And so we see it as um, partnership. We're partnering with the Holy Spirit. He's giving us wisdom. Then we have the project partners who are inputting. And so we, we really see that God is with us, and he wants us to communicate So these are just some of the aspects. We pray, we script with the advisor, and then we have initial scheduling of the participants and really prayer for the right actors. Again, we can tell you many testimonies where maybe somebody thought this actor would be good, we pray about it, and we feel, no, I think this person would be good, and that person ends up coming to know the Lord through our production. Um, and so God knows the right people that need to be it in. I, I've heard some of the um, discussions this week like about female actors. So we went to China and we really felt that the lead actress was supposed to be a, a woman and her name was Grace and she ended up coming to know the Lord through the production. So God knew and it was a really great model for that. And then some of the other um, aspects of production to secure housing, transport, and production. So all this is, is your building towards seeing a production done. So then the, the fourth phase, we want to communicate and work out our crew, partner, and participant roles. So we're going from planning, getting everything ready, and then now we're looking at who's going to help us carry out the mission. So this is all in your, this is like a terrible keynote, so I would never do this, but I'm just calling attention to what's in your booklet. Phase four, production team responsibilities. Now, you might get daunted by this. You go, whoa, so much to do. So on our cruise, we have anywhere, well, Calvin and I did the Uyghur, so there was only two. But usually four people they had in Azerbaijan that can do it. We can have up to 10 to 15 sometimes. But the key thing is that you carry out these responsibilities. So whatever your title is, sometimes we want to give a title. You're the producer. You're the gaffer. You're this, the grip. But really, we want to see each of these things fulfilled, no matter what your title is. So it's important to give people really clear guidelines to see them accomplish these things. And the important thing, the one that's non-negotiable, is the cultural advisor. And we're pretty excited. We have one in our room. Mo was our cultural advisor the Farsi project. We had a lot of fun with him. But we see when we do these projects, the non-negotiable we can do Come in with our team. If you give us one person that speaks the language of the people as well as um, speaks English, and it's the person that we feel is that's where the buck stops. If they say, no, we wouldn't do that in a drama, we say, okay, we'll change it. No, they didn't say the line right. Go, okay. So that's the cultural advisor is very important. We really have to pray for the right one. If you have two on the set, we found it can be good if, like, one's falling asleep. But we found that if you have an older guy and a younger guy, the younger guy sometimes defers to the older guy. And so we found it best to just get one person where the buck stops. So a few times you could have multiple team if you think you're going to get accurate. But we just tell people, we can come in and do a project for you if you give us the cultural advisor. So that's important. The translator might just help with um, team logistics and things like that. Um, and we try not to have the cultural advisor to do
do too many tours and helping the team and things. We want to protect him to be fresh and wise on the set. So you want to get some other people like translators and things to help you with other aspects. And then these are just some other um, roles. So you can look at that on your set. And the templates, uh, Pen Penny and Keegan are going to go over it the next day. So we just want you to look through these. And if you have questions, um, Ben and Steve are going to talk more about cross-cultural production. But that these are just the ways of some of the different tools and people that you're going to need. So we see it all. Post-production's putting it all together, all the valuable footage. Back it up, secure it, pray over it. And that you come back and you put it together and you're editing and the soundtracks and you make a wonderful presentation. So those are some of the aspects of all the different things that you're going to need to do when you put it uh, presentation together. You finalize it, you back it up, and you distribute it widely, utilizing all means of communication. So that's some of the phases that you can be involved in the production. You see in your booklet the different roles, and then you'll hear more now some of the exciting, inspirational, behind-the-scenes and practice of cross-cultural evangelism. <laughs>